Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be doing some gaming on Linux with the all-new Intel NUC Dragon Canyon. Now, this thing is a monster. I mean, this will basically run anything in Windows at 4K Ultra. I haven't run into any game that went under 60 FPS at 4K Ultra with it. And it really comes down to that CPU and GPU they're using in this unit. We've got an Alder Lake i9-12900. It's a non-K variant. And the GPU here is an RTX 3080. We've also got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz. And for a small form factor PC, this thing performs absolutely amazingly in Windows. Now, I've really wanted to install Linux on this, so that's exactly what I've done here. We're going to be running Manjaro Linux, which is based on Arch, and we're going to test out some of our favorite PC games using Steam Play, otherwise known as Proton. And I'm going to throw a couple emulators in here by the end, like PS3 and Original Xbox. But before we jump into the testing, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Simply Nuck. They were kind enough to send the Dragon Canyon, otherwise known as the Nuck 12 Extreme over for review, fully loaded. And I think the coolest part about this whole thing is they're actually giving one away that's basically an exact replica. So yeah, Simply Nook is partnering up with Intel to give away a fully loaded Intel Nut 12 Extreme. This is known as the Dragon Canyon. And they're also going to be throwing in a cherry mouse and keyboard. But if you're not familiar with Simply Nook, they specialize in all things mini PC, from business applications to gaming PCs. Obviously, we've got an awesome little gaming PC here. They were founded in 2015, and their headquarters are right here in the United States in Round Rock, Texas. And yeah, they're going to be giving away an exact replica of the one we're going to be testing out in this video. And right off the bat, just judging by the specs, this thing is going to be able to run anything you throw at it. All the information you need to enter is linked in the description. They are the only ones that are going to contact you. Nobody will contact you in the comments of this video if you're a winner. This is all going through a third-party giveaway site known as Gleam, and there's several ways to enter. And along with the fully loaded Intel NUC 12 Extreme, they're going to be bundling it with a Cherry MX 3.0S gaming keyboard and a Cherry MC 3.1 gaming mouse. So if you're interested in entering the giveaway, all links are in the description. And again, I can't stress it enough. If you are a winner, you will not be contacted in the comments of this video. There's a lot of scams going on right now. Everything's going through Gleam. So setting this little PC up with Manjaro went really smooth. There was only one thing I really needed to enable, and that was the 3080. And we can do that from the system settings. I just needed to download the latest driver, get it all updated. And uh, it's definitely working out well. There are some beta drivers that allow you to use RTX with this, but I'm sticking with the latest stable NVIDIA Linux driver here, and it's working out great. I've got DLSS working in Steam Play or Proton, and overall, we're getting some really great gaming and emulation performance in Linux on this machine, and I kind of expected it to, given that we have that powerful Alder Lake i9 and an RTX 3080. So like I mentioned, DLSS is working on the system with the latest NVIDIA driver, but from the launch options, we do have to add this. I'll leave it in the description in case you want to test it out. And I didn't want to enable it system-wide. I'm just using it with games that I know support DLSS from the settings. Another application I utilize a lot while gaming on Linux is Go Overlay. This is just a graphical interface for Mango HUD, and it allows us to display all of our performance metrics on screen. It's kind of like Afterburner for Windows, but uh, we do get a ton of information here. And through all of my testing, you will see this on screen. Right now, I've got the resolution of this system set to 1080, but I'm going to go ahead and take it to 4K because that's exactly what we're going to be testing with here. With that RTX 3080, I think it's totally possible to basically run anything at 4K, even though we're using Proton here. I only had it at 1080 because it's just a bit easier to see and I didn't want to do any scaling. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into some gameplay. We're going to start off light here with The Witcher 3. Like and here it is. Going into it, I didn't expect to get bad performance. I thought we'd be able to run this perfectly fine. We're actually getting an average of 83 FPS. We're at 4K Ultra. I've even got hair works on. As you can see, I've got Mango HUD running on the left hand side gives us our GPU and CPU information. And at the very bottom, you can see the screen's resolution. So we really are at 4K here. This game's gonna run just fine. Next up, Doom Eternal 4K Nightmare settings. I didn't go to Ultra Nightmare, but it would definitely handle it, you know, over 60. But right now, with it set up like this, we can get well over 100 FPS on average with this, and uh, definitely plays really, really well. 
So far, I've just been filming this 4K BenQ monitor, but recently I picked up a new game capture card, which actually allows me to capture in 4K, so we're going to go ahead and plug everything in there. That way we can get a better look at these games. Next up, we've got God of War 4K Ultra with DLSS set to quality. So uh, we can get over 100 FPS with DLSS set to performance, but with it set up like this, we're getting an average of around 74 FPS. With no DLSS on, I actually did see it dip down to around 58 every once in a while, and that's why it's enabled here. Here's another one I wanted to test, Elden Ring 4K maximum settings, and to tell you the truth going into this, I thought we were going to run into a few issues given that we're running this with Proton, but it's running at a constant 60. We're totally maxed out here, I haven't seen it dip under 60 whatsoever, and performance is amazing with this setup. Here's Project Cars 2, 4K Ultra, I know it's a little older title, but this is one of my favorite racing games still to this day, and it looks really, really good at 4K Ultra. I didn't think we'd have any issues here, and we're getting an average of 101 FPS out of it. And Justice 2 is another one I always like to test with Linux, and we're totally maxed out at 4K. Every once in a while you'll see that frame counter, you know, fluctuate between 59 and 60. I personally wouldn't worry about this. It's something you would never notice. The only reason I know it's doing it is because I have the frame counter on screen right now. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have Cyberpunk 2077, 4K Ultra, no DLSS, and I'm not really thrilled with the performance here. We're getting an average of 36, so your best bet right now is to turn DLSS to performance. Little disappointing, and I've tested this a lot on Linux, but it was always with an AMD GPU. And in my experience, this game does perform much better with AMD GPUs than Linux. Now it's time to test out some high-end emulation in Linux, and I've said it before, but my favorite CPU for emulation is an Alder Lake CPU, be it an i5 or an i9. The best CPU I've tested for emulation so far is the i9-12900K, and that's in my main rig. Done a couple videos on it, and it will run anything at 4K. So going into it in Linux with this hardware, I figured we'd get great performance. And of course, here's PS3 using RPCS3, Skate 3, harder one to emulate, Full speed at 60. And finally here, we've got some original Xbox using XEMU. We're at 2X Res, and this is one of those games I always like to test with different CPUs. It's Sega GT 2002, and with this specific emulator, the only way I've been able to get it to run at full speed is on an Alder Lake CPU with an NVIDIA GPU. This just takes a lot out of your CPU, but this thing can definitely handle it. So in the end, the Intel NUC12 Extreme does perform really well with Linux, as you saw in this video, whether you want a game with it or emulation. I will tell you that in Windows, I was getting better performance with all of the games that I tested, but that's kind of expected right now because we're using Proton and Steam Play, but it is coming really close. I mean, Linux gaming is getting really, really good. And to tell you the truth, I don't need 100 FPS in God of War. I could turn VSync on and everything that I tested so far would run at 60 FPS, ultra settings, no problem at all. And with it set up like that, I could have a really great 4K experience in Linux on the Intel NUC12 Extreme. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on this NUC, be it a different operating system, more emulators, games, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on if you're interested in videos like this. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.